Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 374, and today we're doing battle with Shen Jarvan. And so, uh, we are continuing our playthrough of the lineup that got second place in the NA uh, World's Open Tournament. This was a lineup set to be good against Karma Set, and also be good against Samira Fizz. And so, if you're looking to either... Uh, play in the Ruthless Rumbles in this upcoming weekend, or if you're looking to just grind up through the ladder, uh, this is a very reasonable collection of decks between the Samira Jinx in the previous video, the Shen Jarvan here, and then uh, Annie Jen when we'll get to her in a day or two. And so uh, the deck, it does play quite similarly similarly to these Fiora Shen decks of old. If you think to those decks back in the day, at their heart and at their core, they were a board control deck. And so you're looking to uh, challenge down the opposing units. Hang on, I've got a cat. Jesus Christ. Go. Not stopping the video. It's just what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> but it would uh, be a deck that was very good at controlling the board. You have this big pile of challengers. Today we have the full set of Petrocyte Broadwings and Screeching Dragons, along with the Fleet Feather Tracker. Giving those units barrier lets you kind of pick and choose the combats to where you get to uh, typically attack up in the curve, and so you get to, say, maybe take down your opponent's 4-drop with your 2-drop and then protect your 2-drop with a barrier. And so it makes it uh, a little bit easier to just develop this very wide board. And then once you have this board control, this deck is able to uh, take down the game in either one of two directions. And so you can either uh, take the the more common combat based route as to where you've gotten those barriers in the early game. Now that you're in the late game, you just have more units on board than your opponent does. And then you're typically able to just kind of continue to pick and choose combats to where you eventually grind your opponent down uh, since they aren't able to block how they actually want to be blocking. Uh, the second avenue to victory is a little bit more uh, spectacular. <laughs> it's similar to the OTK pass with Fiora back in the day uh, as to where uh, if you're able to get the Sacred Protector onto the board, and then if you have a wider board than the opponent, you can kind of pick and choose where you're going to get double strikes through. And so if you want to imagine a, a scenario where you have the Sacred Protector and then another unit and then a Challenger, if your opponent only has one unit on the board, you could probably just pull that unit off to the side and then barrier up something like the Sacred, Proterior, the Sacred Protector uh, to attack for 16. Or if they're in a space to where they have two units, you can... Uh, potentially just barrier up the one that's not blocked. And so you're going to find it's kind of easy to get into that situation since we have so many board control elements as to where uh, we can drop a surprise barrier on an unblocked unit in the middle of combat and then blast our opponent for like 14 or 16 damage. And so uh, very good. It's a nice take on, on a classic deck of old. I love these decks that have Jarvan in it. I think Jarvan's still quite fantastic in this format, giving you the access to that unit that can come in and just sort of uh, break the balance of open attacking when he can kind of come in with flash and attack out of nowhere. Very powerful stuff. Uh, the last thing to kind of say about these cards are they do work exceptionally well against decks that are trying to play damage-based removal. And so if your opponent's trying to come at you with Mystic Shots, High Notes, Aftershocks, and the like, uh, being able to kind of counterspell those uh, with all of the various barriers is quite good, especially when the likes of things like Kanaku Student get involved as to where uh, you, you might be able to use a barrier to stop two combats or use a barrier to shut down a removal spell, but then have the barriered student behind ready to stop the combat. Lots of very interesting and powerful synergies that come out of these things. And so that's the deck. That's what we're going to be doing battle with today. Let's queue it up, see how things go. This cat just immediately wanted out of the room as well. You shut the door, she starts pawing at the door. You let her in right during the intro of your video, and then she wants back out. It's, it's so tough dealing with these kitties. My life <laughs> could be the hardest of anyone's in the world. But all right, a match has been found up against Samira Kennan. Let's get to battle. This is a matchup that should be pretty decent for us. It, it tends to... Uh, the, the Samira Kennan deck tends to fall apart a little bit if you're able to come in and interact with it. And so uh, ideally with a big hand of challengers and single combats and the like, we could keep them from their uh, kind of core game plans. All right, Vistayan Disciple. You got it, my dude. So we can continue on in. We'll get the Broadwing in. 
And then this is a, a strong unit, even in the sense if we get a trade on this turn now, if we're able to hook down a lot of these one health units, it's something that we can get uh, typically a few rounds of value out of. So we'll, we'll see how this goes, see what the opponent does. Having the double blocking Badger Bear is also quite nice against uh, a deck packed full of elusives. All right, slow plays from the opponent. We'll have to see what we want to do here. It's, it's a slightly awkward spot in terms of our mana. Uh, if we want to, uh, to to play a single combat this round, then we can't play the Badger Bears. But if he's going to be open attacking us here, I feel pretty good with this single combat, even if he's going to play a Wuju style or something to turn this into a trade. Uh, getting the, the shutdown on this unit's pretty decent. All right, gruesome theater coming in. Fair enough. God, this cat's trying to sit on my feet now. <laughs> this is this is gonna be one of these days with one of these videos. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad I could I could bring this to you. <laughs> All right, though, these pathless agents fairly fairly annoying. That was a a, a very big addition to the board for the opponent, but fantastic draw with the bright steel protector. We should be able to. Uh, ideally win one of these combats. The opponent's not spending any mana, but if that just gives them a concussive palm, it's not the, the biggest deal in the world. Okay, I'm not worried about the ground-based units here. The Pathless Ancient could just hang out forever. Much more interested in going after uh, the Elusives and the Dancing Droplet. So he has the recall. It's completely okay. He's been doing a, a bit of work in terms of uh, building up board or building up his cycle and his card draw, but he hasn't really done anything to uh, combo off in terms of winning the game. Ha, I've lived to see a new age. All right, I think we're safe to start dropping Badger Bears. We did pick up Deny, so we are going to be looking to uh, uh, keep mana up for it. Just if we can get to uh, get a shutdown on a key recall, if we get to shut down a a tap out or something then we can build up from there but i think we still want to add in the unit first shouldn't need to deny this turn but we'll see how it goes again i'm gonna hook these elusives out of combat if he wants to trade uh with one of the badger bears i'm i'm okay with that now because we still have a blocker for the next turn shadow shift is okay not worthy of a of a a deny we could look to barrier here but that's just going to protect our unit it's not going to actually stop the dancing droplet and so i'm fine to just let that go ahead and go through okay. been decent up to this point no kennens no samira's opponents just been doing a bunch of cycle and losing out on board it's not bad for us. Samira finally turns up a little, a little late to the party. I think we're safe to play the Screeching Dragon. We shouldn't need to deny this turn, and then we can still play both barrier and single combat if we need to. No problem. That's too bad. I was hoping we could get out of this with a barrier, but opponent says no. And a tag out. Sure. It's a bit unfortunate when it's hitting such an expensive unit, but it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. Feels like we should have typically just lost the game at this <laughs> by this point, but the opponent hasn't been able to capitalize without uh, uh, without access to the Samira up to here. But. We're gonna need to remove her from the board. This board's just getting way too scary. We don't even have good attacks this round with the uh, with the dancing droplet coming down, and we have this awkward ass hand to where uh, uh, to to where we can only play one unit. It's a bit of a disaster. Gosh, and he has the the one mana recall. We we have to try and deny this. We can't let the Samira come back down on board. I kind of feel like if he's made it to this point without having her, uh, he probably just doesn't have another copy, but 
I, I think if this fails or if he has another recall, this game's just done. He's going to start comboing next turn. Yep. Okay. GG. Tough match. On to the next one. Just not able to, uh, to, to really get up and running. Alright, what is up next? Nasus with Maokai. Interesting, a new addition to the Maokai deck. You most, when we were playing it, we typically just played uh, with, with Nasus, no Azir. Now Azir has become the more the, the more common option running around. Interesting to see Maokai turn up. I assume that this is going to be a... Um, I, I assume it's going to be a... Uh, what do you call it? Vaults of Helia deck? But we'll have to have to wait and see what turns up. The the Vaults of Helia matchup is a little weak for us. It's certainly winnable. Uh, the the deck can be its own worst enemy a lot of times, and so have the, the chance to get out in front of it or or limit what they're able to sacrifice off to the vaults. I've got gravel cakes and slag fruit. Alright, see if we can't take down this rock bear shepherd. This would be a vault's turn from the opponent, and so if they're able to play the vaults this turn, they won't have any units to sacrifice off to us. Uh, this is uh, a bit weak in the terms that we just don't have any mana to spend. It's kind of kind of delightful to actually see this undergrowth roll through, just <laughs> just so we don't have to tap through the turn without spending any mana. Okay. So we don't win the combat, but he doesn't really get to add anything to the board. He doesn't get to add in any vaults. It's not that bad. He'll be able to get this rock bear up and running soon, but as we open attack on our next turn, Jarvan should be able to take it down. Nice, nice defensive setup from the opponent. Let's see if he's got the old vengeance to take down Jarvan. Does not. So, getting a, a nice build up on the board. Uh, hopefully, uh, the, this cataclysm will be enough to protect us on this upcoming turn. It's not. <laughs> it's not going to be enough. It's going away. set of cards coming out of this deck though not not really what i was expecting to see seems like he just doesn't have a lot to do so i'm, I'm leaning towards uh just not playing jarvan this turn and opening with him next turn let's go ahead and drop in the duelist put the 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 challenger onto the badger bear uh, this is not a a particularly worrisome combat coming from the five five we can take quite a bit of damage and not really care about it but now that we get the uh, the Challenger Badger Bear on board, we can really kind of pick and choose what's about to happen here. It's been uh, really unfortunate for these Greenglade Caretakers, but kind of is what it is, you know. And I think we want... Do we want to leave these sentries on board? I mean, he hasn't shown a vaults up to this point. We can protect the, the Greenglade Caretaker with the form up if we need to. Let's swing with everybody. I'd like to I'd like to get this board emptied out if we can. It sucks to let him, you know, draw these cards as it seems like he's had a, a, a bit of a weak draw. But uh, the, just the ability to kind of clear all of this out makes me feel a little bit safer. If he wants to drop the vaults this turn, he's not gonna have the mana to add any good units to the board. Uh, he can only add a, a four drop so he can't even build up to, to Nasus on the turn. And we'll just have to see if we can't can't get that killing blow on our next attack. I will tend this we should add this care caretaker to the board. It's like if we're going to be 
uh, trying to, to cataclysm as soon as we can. We're not going to want to lose out on these barriers. We got to we got to get this game closed out. Hi, dude's deep. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to see any sea monsters coming out of this thing. So he goes Bakai, drops it onto our Badger Bear. I don't really want to deny this thing. It's not... Uh, it's like I, I want to save it for the Vengeance. I think we can drop a Spirit's Refuge, though. It's going to let us continue to build up board here. The, the bonus onto these additional caretakers. We'll lose one of them to the sapling, but it's not terrible at the end of the day. Alright. Let's see if we can win this before we get decked. I think we're still in decent shape. We're losing out on more board than I would like, but Hopefully with this deny back in hand, uh, we'll be able to take over a little bit. Sucks. I mean, this is, this is our big nine attack bro is going to be gone. All right. Who? Can't let this Maokai sit around. I was really hoping to save that spell for a vengeance, but if Maokai gets to sit around next turn and then just, just generate more blockers, we're never going to win this game. We at least have a lot of power with this now. We can clear out a lot of this board, get the, the free Cataclysm for the turn again. So, see what we can do. Need to play the student first. Hopefully this doesn't go poorly, but if we get to, say, Cataclysm something, and then the, the, the student's going to pick up the barrier, then with the barrier on the student, the caretaker's going to get the bonus stats, and then, if he's not, you know, really doing anything here, we're gonna be uh, close to the lethal if we hook the the Bakai out of combat. It's a big old Nasus. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is painful. He's gonna. We, we can't threaten enough for the lethal. Right, we, we can only uh, swing in for 12. The, the block onto the, the student is fine. He's not uh, able to get enough strikes to stop it, but now the vaults is gonna pop. He's gonna hit the rekindler. The rekindler is gonna resummon out a Nasus. We're not gonna have the stats to remove him from the board. Oh, he should have hit Maokai. What? Oh. It's because he's got... <laughs> I guess that makes sense. It's because he's actually got... Uh, Maokai is a dead champion. I, I'm so used to uh, only having the, uh, the the Nasus be the possibility. So let's... So what's going to happen? I'm curious what his expensive card is. Like, one of these Rekindlers is going to die, and then he's going to hit, like, Des and Ada. I think we have to Cataclysm off the Maokai. That's going to limit the number of saplings. I was trying to think if there was a a way to where his board would fill up with saplings, but with things going left or right on the round starts, the, the vaults will hit before the Maokai does. And uh, we're not going to be able to overfill his board so that the, the cards don't happen. Why did it go that way? Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't have any cards in his deck expensive enough for the um, for the vaults. He doesn't have any eight drops left in his deck. If he even has any, I guess. All right. Well, another big potential here with these these students picking up the barriers. The barriers adding to the caretakers might be able to get wide enough now, assuming we get this kill onto, uh, onto Maokai. We have to win this turn, though. So Nasus comes in. We're only going to hit for six damage. <sighs> Brutal. Brutal. 
All right, GG. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if we missed some damage along the way there. That, that's a that's a tough spot. But opponent unlocks victory. We had some choices in there to where where we we in, in our usage of the deny. I think it was okay, but. Uh, I'm curious if we couldn't have stopped that Maokai from flipping at some point, or at least flipping when he did. If we'd had one more turn without Maokai flipping, then we would have gotten an extra attack in the game and, and probably been able to take it down from there. That's tough. All right, though. Reasonable enough start up against the old Celesbians, the, the Leona Diana. I'm going to hang on to the Prismatic Barrier here. It just pops off so well with our hand in the sense that we can also just not play any of these cards in the first couple of turns and then on turn three uh, we can play the the caretaker the student the barrier and not have to worry about uh, diana hooking down our units Let's see if that's the way we even want to go about it now that we picked up the badger bear we can we can take this as more of a combo draw if we want to, uh, and just be a little bit slower with it I think I'm okay with that. Although the 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 Kanaku student's going to be pretty good two turns from now if we get to drop uh, if we get to drop Shen. And so I'm thinking maybe we just play uh, the the caretaker. We play the student and then we just don't attack. So we'll still have the mana uh, if we need to drop a prismatic barrier. And then if we get to play Shen this turn, uh, Shen's just gonna drop the goods everywhere. Maybe we don't even want to drop Shen. Just let him provide the barriers next turn. Two worlds, one balance. These are all just like monumentally good blocks. It's like if opponent, they, they just have to risk uh, just, just getting annihilated <laughs> by a prismatic barrier on this attack. And so it's not like we have to worry about unspeakable horrors. Like unspeakable horror is not in the game anymore. Still gonna go for it. We'll get the the takedown onto Diana. Uh, we could look to play single combat this turn if we want, uh, since we have the the barriers back on our Kanaku students. But I, I think I would rather uh, just just save it for Shen. So there's a nice three barriers for Shen up to this point. Really close to flipping. All right, just takes it. <laughs> he says, that's enough bust. That's too much for me. All right, GG. Nice little combos there in the early game. It's, that's one of the things that you're, you know, you're able to do if you, if you think you get into that spot and your opponent has to start making some bad blocks and they only have like one unit on the board, then being able to hook their remaining units out of combat while you have these just gigantic things on board. Be exceptionally strong. So here, up against Bard Gwen, it's a bit of an interesting start with the Caretaker and the Bright Steel, and then being able to interact with one unit with a single combat. I think this is where we want to keep. Uh, it's, it's usually up against the Gwen decks. It's just so important to be able to have an answer to Gwen uh, that I, I, I like this uh, this access to the Bright Steel. Oh, wait, no reason to just trade with Bard or with Bird here. I don't think we want to be attacking either, though. Nice pickup with the form up. Let's just pass and uh, keep the, the mana behind. So we'll see if we get to pop off this turn. Maybe we should have dropped the Green Glade Caretaker last turn uh, so that we would be in a space to where... Um, we, we'd be in a, in a space to where we... If, if we opponent didn't open and then we could drop the bright steel we'd be able to get out in front of this a little bit more i think we want to do a little bit of preventing here i'm going to look to add in the this caretaker block and then i'm going to play the other caretaker keep the two mana back for the the single combat or for the bright steel whichever and then next turn i'm going to look to add the combat cook 
see if we can't get a nice quick attack hit in, uh, or just hit a a, a good a, a good item in general. So if he hits quick attack, we'll be able to attack. If we don't hit quick attack, we'll probably just pass the round. So fish a whack is what we're stuck with. Not really, didn't not really able to interact with this stuff. Let's just get Esmuth out of here. We still have this backup single combat. If the opponent's gonna actually play Gwen next turn, it doesn't seem like she's really uh, uh, on on the radar at this point. So well, what do I know? <laughs> What do I know? Let's see what kind of takedowns we can get here. I'm not certain I agree with how these attacks look, but not a not a terrible interaction for us. We'll get the the full clear on their board and still have the caretaker and the combat cook behind. be cool if we we're able to present lethal next turn right <laughs> we're we're actually fairly close with five damage coming out of the repost and when jarvan turns up perfect opponent says uh-oh <laughs> then surprise damages come in this is gonna be a hate spike or something that's okay it, it, it's not a, a horrible spot to be adding in. Uh, he goes after the, the caretaker. That makes sense. I was going to say, it's not a horrible spot to be picking up this, this fish of whack. We have so many good targets with the uh, uh, with the, the Green Glade caretaker running around, and then with the potential that we get out of uh, having Sacred Protector on board and giving a unit double strike, and then overwhelming with double strike is always uh, exceptionally powerful. So do we want to drop this barrier onto Jarvan? I, I definitely want to get the boat down this turn. We can look to hit the opponent with surprise damage next turn with the repost, uh, assuming that uh, the the protector is still on board. So I, I feel like Jarvan is is the the kind of better target. It's just like if something goes wrong in combat with like a hate spike, um, then we don't have to invest all that extra mana in getting our, our combat cook up and running again. The fate of mortals and spirits falls to me. So we gotta try and take over this board just a little bit. I, I feel like we might be able to actually get the kill with our with our combat cook this turn. This is going to be a surprise repost, right? So it's, it's going to depend on uh, who he throws in front of it. It's Bard. Bard. Bard is just ready for action out here. I think we're, we're, we're kind of... It's like, I, I don't want it to be too obvious. Like, I want to attack with everybody. And I don't want it to be obvious that Bard should be going in front of our combat cook, right? He's going to go up to 8, hit for 16. Prepare yourself. We move soon. Hmm. That's a that's a fairly dangerous one. Like, he would have to block our our combat cook with the with Bird. Come and get it. Providence, guide me. Let's go this way and see what happens. Uh, we we also have this kind of possibility if we make it into the next turn. It's like I I don't think our chances next turn are really that good if we don't get the kill on this round. Uh, but oh, 
I was like, oh boy, is he is he just gonna leave the combat cook unblocked? But but I think if we make it into the uh, into the next round and we have this opportunity with Jarvan and the overwhelm, that that we could potentially uh, we could potentially get a takedown that way. Uh, this is this is a nasty vengeance. We lose out on our double strike potential with Jarvan and Debard. I think we're still stuck reposting him. Uh, it's not it's not gonna get any better than this. What's his hallowed at? Three? Gwen will take it up to four. So he's one short of the lethal with the Esmuth. And then if we get the, the Badger Bear down. Maybe we, maybe man, maybe we should have just played Badger Bear. Well, <laughs> I guess if you're just gonna top deck the Gwen, then it doesn't really matter. But at least she's not flipped here. So we have to block. And then I mean we've picked up the Sacred Protector. So I mean next turn we're going to. Uh, Sacred Protector, a unit, and then hit it with the Fissure Wax. So I think we can just throw away Shen, uh, since Jarvan's going to be the one that has the most stats. And hopefully we're okay here. If he has a, a, a Vengeance, we'll of course lose, but outside of Vengeance, I, I think we're going to be fairly safe. Let's go ahead and play the Fissure Wax this turn. And so... If he wants to get clever with, like, blowing up our Jarvan on this round, then we'll have a uh, an opportunity to still replay it next turn. Saiyan Thousand Tail doesn't, doesn't get us close enough to the victory. Okay, so uh, it's this is tough. It's like uh, Jarvan's hitting for 18, and so we need him to land on one of these twos, or we need him to flip. But uh, it's like if we want the protector to survive, it's not going to against either Bard or against Gwen. So I don't think we want to hook Gwen out of combat. I'm looking to just hook in the Esmuth. We have to attack with Jarvan. And the boat attack should be safe. Oh, what a bummer, man. One short. And of course... <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. All right, GG. Whew, tough stuff. You, you always have to ask yourselves when the games are that close if you missed out on a point of damage along the way. It feels like this is the second one in a row as to where we've fallen like, just a little bit short. And I feel like if I had like 30 or 40 more games of experience with this, we'd be sitting on a 3-1 and one record instead of a 1-3. and three. But that's what we're here for. It's the it's the the outlook you have to take into these games. It's very easy to get into the kind of mindset to where uh, you you think that winning is all that matters, and it gets really stressful if you're not out here winning games and stuff. But uh, the 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 mindset that you need to be in is just just to learn and to get better. And as you improve and get better at the game, uh, the the wins will just follow. Very, this hand turned into a, a very aggressive draw, though. We're able to get the 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 second Green Glade Caretaker down next turn, barrier up the Broadwing, and then get to get to attack for eight. It's especially strong if opponent only has one unit. We'll see. Picking picking up the third Caretaker, it might be worthwhile to to just play it a little bit slow, but. 
I, I can't imagine that's the way. It's it's so much. Um, it's so much kind of like exponential damage when you get to do the the two this turn, but then it would be like five or so on the next attack. I think we just want to start ramping them up now as soon as we can. We don't have like clever combos in our hand. All right. Nice little 11 piece nugget coming through on turn three. That's what that's what Samira Jinx wishes she could do, right? <laughs> and you say, I, I, I dream of being able to attack for 11 on turn three. Looks like I'm ready. Bye -bye. Hey, folks, annoying. I'll give her that. He probably needs to attack with it now. He's going to be in this spot next turn to where. We can Broadwing hook the Fey Folk out to the right so the lifesteal doesn't happen till the end of combat. And that's a, that's a that's a scary place to be against this board. But, I mean, I guess trading the Fey Folk for a Brightsteel Protector doesn't feel that good. Uh, I'm curious. I mean, it's like... His combat tricks are going to be the same as our tricks, so we can still form up to kill this thing if we need to. If he goes with, like, a Wuju style, that's still only two health. I guess a Twin Disciplines is problematic twin disciplines even still in the format uh, i don't i don't remember <laughs> it's been it's been too long with that one all right we got that dumb dumb out of here if we pick up a barrier we should be winning the game did not so badger bear it is can still hook this master yi out of combat and have a pretty strong attack set now another combat trick in hand not a terrible place to be Are we ever willing to just trade the, the Kanaku student for the Disciple? I mean, I think that's pretty okay. Like, we're going to be hitting for, like, a million damage if he... Uh... And then I, I don't... It's like, I don't think he's going to... Like, it just feels like we're so far ahead at this point that if we keep his board empty, we're going to be in a pretty okay spot. He's gonna he's gonna form up and then we'll form up. What Interesting. Okay. Well, let's take the the full clear on the board. Gets him down to seven. We have this backup caretaker if we ever draw a barrier. Should still be in decent shape. There's our boy. There's our barrier. Hmm. Dark and fan certainly is annoying. Let's just drop in Jarvan at this point. It's kind of the same deal as to where we can pull this thing out of combat next turn. And so we should we should just be safe here. This attack shouldn't even gain any health since he's gonna if he attacks with the bird. We block it with Jarvan, that's going to break the equipment, but then we can still bro block the um, the little guy, whatever he's called. We can block him with the, the Kanaku student and, and barrier away the uh, barrier away the life steal or the life gain from the steal since the unit will deal zero. All right, GG, victory obtained. On to the next one. Raise those banners, bro. Whew. Such big damage, man. I, I don't know if uh, some, some nerd on Reddit would have to tell us. Uh, I guess it is. If you want to think of like the most damage you could be dealing on turn three, you can just say, well, I'll play six I'll play six one drops that deal deal three damage a piece and you can hit for eighteen. There's probably some kind of OTK that you can actually hit for twenty on turn three if you get the 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 miracle draw. But that's a that's a, a pretty good set of damage for not a lot of effort that we were putting forth. Alright, so we're up against Nara Nar Nora. It's 
awkward being on the 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 even attacks here since he's able to uh, attack with Nora before we can get a badger bear down the block. And so let's hang on to one and then mulligan the rest of the stuff away and see if we can't find a, an early game challenger. found one. Not quite ready to get involved with this conchologist. We, uh, ideally, if we're going to be having our units you know, be in the spot where they can be damaged, we're, we're going to be uh, having access to barriers. Right, That's going to be our kind of big uh, competitive angle against this deck with all of the uh, scorched Earths and Disintegrates and, and Lord Broadmains and the like, if we can just come in and protect everybody with the barriers. Okay. So he gets one portal. Then ideally after after this portal we'll just be we'll be set. Not worried about this damage. He's he's nowhere near getting lethals on us or anything. All right, Let's see if we can't start this barrier train. Picking on it hard. I sense an All right, I'm fine with this. It I, I don't suspect that this Nora is going to die. It's pretty easy to have like a Disintegrate or a Scorched Earth, whatever you need to actually stop the unit from getting the kill here. But I think across the course of this turn and next turn, we should be okay uh, in terms of getting her taken down, right? He didn't get to answer both the Broadwing and the Badger Bear. He only got the answer on uh, the, the direct challenge that was happening. Now, he did go out of his way to put damage on Shen. I assume Shen's just going to be dead at this point. Uh... He's going to die to a Scorched Earth or something. Just It is what it is. Got to get in front of this Nora, though. It's such a big blast of damage if we... Oh my god, this cat. It's such a big blast of damage if we... Uh, if we are able to go for, like, the, key, the caretaker and the student. Maybe that's the way to go, and then... If he is going to drop like a stun or a pirouette or something onto the badger bear, we still have the, the single combat at home. Oh my god, it's like 80 degrees out here. Got a cat trying to sit on my feet. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's so annoying. Oh, this was bad, wasn't it? Just giving him the, the direct opportunity to pastry toss. That was not that was not ideal. Move. Move. It's like every second video, the cat tries to come in and sit on my feet. Just get that get that nonsense out of here. Alright, well this is a big ass attack next turn if opponent doesn't do anything. Uh, we got the the barrier coming in for Jarvan, the barrier from Shen. Uh, all at open attack speed. Looks like it's just it's just a straight up lethal. I, I don't suspect we're gonna get the lethal here, uh, but th this should take a pretty heavy mana investment from the opponent to stop. Uh, oh, just just get him! <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't take any mana investment just to just to come in and get that W. With honor. All right, good stuff. Next battle. Just boom him out of nowhere. That's what I love about Jarvan, man. He does so much. I don't feel like he really gets enough enough respect these days. People don't don't want to play the big Demacia six drop, but it's like whenever you look at a unit like Orn, and Orn doesn't doesn't do anything, right? You you have to like really set up these boards to where you play Orn, and then you're just like, wow, I hope you're completely unable to interact with this unit. Uh, you know, you have to, like, either try and play it on your opponent's turn, have them do nothing, come into your turn, and then be able to, like, open attack, or uh, you just play it on your turn and kind of hope. <laughs> hope he doesn't get hit with a concussive palm or something. And it's uh, it it's so, like, wild with Jarvan just being able to make open attacks like that to where he comes into play, so he gets to attack 
uh, as you immediately spend the mana, but then also generating the cataclysms. It's good stuff. Doesn't doesn't get enough respect to people too busy playing karma and shit, right? <laughs> All right, though, back to this one. Up against Deep. Appears as though opponent does not have Quietus, so that's a decent enough start. Let's see if he comes at us with the 2-3, the, the Sea Scarab. That's going to be our key unit to take down here in the early game. It's the, the easiest way for opponent to ramp into Deep. But we're set up reasonably well for it. We have two birds. We got Shen for next turn and getting these nice barriered attacks in. You got no complaints from me. We can wait until next round before we try and drop a single combat, or if he wants to play a Quietus now, we can we can trade the single combat away. Brings in a heavy metal. I'll allow it. That doesn't get a kill. I did the mathematics on that one. That does not kill the Petrosite Broadwing. And so, I mean, it's it's not like he's that threatening anymore, but you, you do still get some opportunities with the Broadwing to maybe kill off a uh, Dreg, Dreg Deepers, Dreg Dredgers, or <laughs> to, to hook a, a bigger unit out of combat or something. It's it's not irrelevant having this, the, this one health uh, Broadwing hanging out. All right, well, we'll take down the Sea Scarab now. A little, a little less appealing. The removal spells have been dropped. I find them unworthy. You know, it is a little worrisome. Our hand doesn't have a lot of punch to it, right? I mean, we really need this, uh, the, this Shen to be flipping if we want to get these big bursts of damage. We have a lot of reactive stuff in hand, and it's expensive reactive stuff at that. Opponents at 19, so I'd, I would just assume that they can kind of go deep on, on command now. This is a... It's very wild for him to be so close to deep without having to have... Uh, without having to have uh, used the Sea Scarab. He's like churned through this thing so hard. Even play double jettison. <laughs> that's what that's what'll get you there. Beautiful. So we'll get to we'll, we'll get to completely take over this board. We'll get the kills on all of his units before. The, uh, so I go. Uh, before the, uh, the the sea scarab stuff pops off. So what what I'm looking to do here, uh, we we kind of want to keep all of our units. It's going to be fine to let him get this single hit. Uh, he's not going to go deep right away, and we could pull in the sea scarab here, still get the kill, still keep our units, get these attacks in. We'll see, see if we make it to the next round. The thing to kind of watch yourselves with on this board is if we uh, if we do manage to get Shen to flip or we want to use Repost, we have to worry about the Petrosite Broadwing, right? You don't want to be giving the, the Broadwing a bunch of bonus attack. It's not going to do anything here. So we'll see if it turns out to be relevant in this space, but I, I'll be the first to tell you I've tried to Repost Broadwings and, and then get really curious when the damage just doesn't turn up. Okay, we'll, we'll barrier through this sapling. He's out of mana at this point. It's going to get us really close to leveling our Shen, just kind of boosts everything. And then we got to be open attacking here. We need to, to win on this on this combat right now. Not a bad draw with form up. So we're going to boost our weakest unit, send everybody else in. We want the... Uh, 
the, the, the drain bro at the very end. And then if we need to, we can get plus five attack off of the riposte. Uh, that plus five will also give the green glade caretaker a bonus. And then we have the form up in hand as well. So very powerful spot. All right, GG. On to the last one, the final battle, game eight coming in. This damn cat still trying to sit on my feet. Move. We're trying to battle. Get out of here. Go. Oh, fuck. Ooh. Feels good when they dig their claws into you and you can feel the skin come up when they pull away. Appreciate that. I love my kitties, but if y'all want this one, you can <laughs> you can have her. It's the one that doesn't hang out in the videos. It's alright. She's getting she's getting old. We gotta we gotta we gotta be kind to her. All right, final battle up against Heimerdinger Vagar. Is that what we're seeing? Not used to seeing that combo, but sure thing. Let's hang on to our blocking Badger Bear. It should be able to survive a lot of the opponent's early removals, and then we're going to look for a more aggressive draw here if we can. Just need to, need to do the winning fast and early, and the aggressive draw is not what we found. Not quite ready to drop in Green Glade Caretaker. It's not going to do anything. And then it's it's really just at risk of dying to uh, things like Quietus. This is a very painful Twisted Catalyzer. I'm not excited about him getting two level ups on the Catalyzer. It is what it is, though. Can't do anything about it. We got all the Caretakers. Not a barrier in sight. Interesting. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to start dropping stuff here. So let's take down the Vagar as we can. We're, we're just gonna have to lose out on the Badger Bear at this point. I'm not going to try and protect it from a darkness. We'll probably find a better one later. Oh boy, not letting that happen. Not letting that happen. And now we don't have to spend the mana just yet. I am going to want to get the, these caretakers on board before we open with Jarvan next turn. So we'll we'll see if he plays in a way where this works for us. Oh my god, this cat. You, you think she would learn at some point, but... Not doing it. I'm certainly bleeding, though. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that one. Huh. <sighs> So with this, if he tries to quiet us, our Green Glade Caretaker, do we ever protect it with Deny? I, I, I don't think so, but it's like such a, a, just like a giant boost of damage next turn if we, if we have both of these, these Caretakers on board. Huh. It's like he, he thought about it and pulled it back. Thinking on a doubly hard now. Leaves us in a decent spot. The, the the secondary Jarvan wasn't a terrible draw. I feel like he uh, wants to spend all of his mana next turn on a Vengeance to kill Jarvan, and we still get to, to punch in for a bunch of damage. That's kind of nice. And then um, if he doesn't and then tries to just play another Vagar or something, having that, that backup Cataclysm is kind of interesting as well. Brings in that vengeance in the middle of combat. Can't deny. That's the only unfortunate thing here, but... Not terrible. I think we want to drop the single combat now. This is going to let us, like, uh, kind of keep our Jarvan for next turn. So I suspect we're going to play the single combat, get the kill on the Donger, and then on... Uh, he, he played a spell immediately instead of Darkness, which isn't, isn't what I expected, but... I, I, I do believe that Jarvan's just going to end up dying to this darkness. But if he doesn't see this Saiyan Thousand Tailed coming in, uh, then, then Jarvan just survives it, right? He's going to have five health. I don't really want him surviving it. I, I think we want to be opening with him next turn. So let's play the Saiyan Thousand Tailed. Maybe we'll pick up an interesting draw for the turn. Not as interesting as I hoped. 
but a little short of lethal this is a unfortunate spot we're gonna have to do a lot of work on this board he's getting the 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 opportunities to just pick up a bunch of shit off this heimerdinger and we we can't stop it i think we just have to attack now like we're never gonna lethal this turn and it's like if we play the screeching dragon and he has an answer uh then we're we're pretty fucked like are we still fucked even if It's like we make this attack and he has a vengeance. We just we just like basically automatically lose the game. Got to get this this Heimer off the board. I mean the the if if we had access to like being able to actually play deny, I think it would have been a little bit different. But either way, we were going to be stuck at three mana and. Prismatic Barrier doesn't stop the spells that we actually care about. Ooh, Vagar number three. Sure. Well, this this is the spot to where I would feel really good in saying, you know, if we can get wider than them by one unit, then we'll be okay. But just, like, having the the end of our day be, uh, be dum-dums like Wrenchbot coming in, it's kind of brutal. Let's see how big we can get. Darkness isn't strong enough to kill any of the units we have on board now. So if we can if we can roll into next turn with some mana banked up, I would be uh, particularly excited about this. But I think we're going to be back in that kind of spot to where we, we need to play the combat cook and hit overwhelm and then barrier the combat cook so it gets to double strike overwhelm. I think that's the only way I'm really, really seeing this come through. So let's lead off with it. If we actually hit, and then we're able to have both Prismatic Barrier and Deny. That's seven. This is 11. So we can play the Duelist if we want. Let us settle this with great sensibility. Maybe that'll help. So we have to deny the darkness, right? We need to save the barrier for the combat cook, otherwise we would have to be, uh, we, we would have to be using Shen to, to be the way to put barrier onto, uh, the cook. Let's see if we hit. We did. One time dealer. And it's even nice with him in the sense that, I mean, he doesn't need the, he, he doesn't need the barrier to kill the wrench bot. See if we did it. No vengeance is today, my friend. Just go ahead and say, of course. It's good. It's about to be the words, right? <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we still have our our fish whack and the potential to to get the kill on the next one. Is Vagar is not flipped yet, and so if we get the open attack two turns from now, it's gonna give us an give us another shot. And a single combat. We can let this the sacred protector fall at this point. Uh, he, he's not he, he's not doing anything right. If we get the the, the bonus onto the Screeching Dragon, then we don't have to have the double attack from him. So I think this is fine. I'm leaning towards just dropping a single combat onto something. Um, Vagar would be the kind of preferred choice, I think. We don't have to worry about this floor be gone actually killing us here, right? We need to not die this turn, which isn't that, that tall of an order. And then we also need to... Uh, Get Screeching Dragon plus Fish Whack down. That's the other kind of angle for the turn. 
He thought about playing something and pulled it back. <laughs> that has me that has me a little scared for next round, but one one step at a time. I am here until I am no more. So he's gonna try and eight something. Say no thank you. And he's only got the two cards in hand after this. Do you think we've done it? Can we do it? Can we win? One can dream. One can dream. Alright, ten coming at us. What do you think our chances of winning are right now? He's got two cards and one draw. Hmm. What does he play? Has he played two Vengeances up to this point? Can't even see what he's played. The deck tracker's failing. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's a, it's a good shot. It's a good shot. Maybe we'll just draw Deny, you know? Alright, there it is. Of course. Okay. <laughs> it kind of it kind of is what it is but I, I i feel like we we had a, a pretty good run with these we finished the day at four and four i know two of those earlier games were were i, I felt like if we just had more experience with the deck we would have been able to, to carry it much farther uh and so ultimately i think the the games themselves didn't really reflect the win rate that we uh, we could have had with a little bit more experience and so uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful deck it's powerful stuff it has a lot of you know, that kind of combo potential to it is to where uh, you could see we had two of those games, right? As to where we were kind of developing these boards to where uh, if uh, things go even slightly right, we're able to just get those double damage overwhelms. And I think that this was this was the second, like we had three today, right? I, I know we were one short in that Gwen game, but that was like three separate vengeances that the opponent had to have. Two from the last opponent, one from the the Gwen one is to where that overwhelm coming through uh, would have probably been lethal if uh, if they don't have their perfect card. And so uh, I think that went, you know, surprisingly well, uh, considering those aren't great matchups and we're still able to uh, to have a bit of success. And so it's good stuff. Again, if you're looking to play in the Ruthless Rumbles this weekend, I... Uh, I, I have like a kind of a hard time recommending this deck. It's not nearly as straightforward as you want it to be. Uh, I definitely feel like there's a lot to this deck that uh, I'm not quite giving it credit for, and you don't uh, just just have a ton of games to where you just come in and blow out your opponent. And so, if you're coming in uh, w without a lot of experience, like I'm, I'm really kind of up in the air, anyways, on the idea of banning not banning out Samira Fizz, uh, and then kind of tacking onto that. Um, an experience with the deck. It's not something that I would be uh, super inclined to, uh, to to recommend that you take into the Rumbles, but it's a deck that has a, a lot of very positive matchups. It has a lot of good, uh, good game against combat-based matchups, and I think it's still going to be a decent choice for this weekend. And so it should be a good ladder grinder in that sense. I feel like we had a pretty good run with this today, and then also pretty good for the Rumble. Just get yourself... Uh, you know, 10, 20 games of experience in before uh, you, you take it right into battle. But nonetheless, good stuff. I had fun with these games. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. And so I hope everyone enjoyed the video. hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way, and you had a good time watching. So this is Bustin' Me. Thank you for being here.